for having me in here. First of all, I want to thank the chairman of this airline and Chief and Oyemer. You know, I don't know him personally, but I've read about him. He's a big tribalized Nigerian. You know, I will follow him. So I want to thank him for coming to our rescue in South Africa, you know. And I also want to thank the federal government, you know, for their support so far. And um, I want the whole world to know that South Africa is not a good place. The South African regime is the apartheid. Using social policy, economic and legal discrimination against the uh, people who are non-whites. But in this case, xenophobia, policy against foreigners of African descent, especially Nigerians, who are not South African citizens. If not, how do you explain a situation where the rights to protect life and property has been usurped and given to those uh, 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 criminals who are ravaging, the, who are running up and down, killing innocent people and destroying their livelihood, while the police stands by and watch, and three to five days later, the unidentified leader of South Africa will come out and want to appear as a condemning such barbaric behavior, as if it was the first. And 20 times these ladies South African has done such stupid and, and, and barbaric acts against the rest of Africans who are in their country. The, 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 the innocent ones who are doing their job, who are abiding and, do, and, and, and abiding by the laws and, and working hard to, to, to make a living is now make a scapegoat. And so um, I'm, so, I'm so very happy that Chief Oyema of, uh, of Air Peace has uh, um, heard our cry in South Africa and he has sent a, a Boeing 777, seven, 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 yeah? yeah, Boeing 77 to come and rescue us. And so I'm, I'm very grateful on behalf of those uh, um, returnees from South Africa which I am one, you know, I want to thank the, 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 the president of this corporation for a wonderful job that he has done. And I, at the same time, I want the federal government to take a very strong stance against South Africa. South, Af South Africa is not a friend, is not a friend to Nigeria. They hate Nigeria so much that they are looking for Nigerians everywhere. We have we heard cases of Nigerians being fished out from their homes, but we are brutally murdered by South African people, and a lot of these cases are they, these things are happening in the in the presence of the police. The police are helpless. The police, which is supposed to keep law and order, you know, is just there standing and watching these barbaric people taking lives, taking laws into their hands and killing innocent Nigerians for nothing. And I want the world to know that a Nigerian, every Nigerian that is lost in South Africa, the life of a Nigerian is more than 10 South African lives because they are lazy. Nigerians are where, they are hard workers all over the world. We go to school, we are learning, we do things, we don't depend on the white man, we are trying we do everything, we excel in whatever country we go, we can survive, we can excel in whatever environment we are exposed to. But South Africans only can survive in their own country. You see, so the, we all know that the, every government has problems around the world, including the United States and, and, and Europe. All governments are having problems, but what I don't understand about this xenophobic South Africa is that they blame foreigners for all their problems. Instead of blaming their government, instead of blaming the white and uh, uh, capitalists who are refusing to create jobs because they have lost power in South Africa, they are these people. What the white people are doing to South Africa is that they put a lot, a lot of sums of money in the bank. They don't want to invest this money.
because they are so they are bitter because of the loss of power so they don't want to create jobs for the for the black folks and so the south african people now take these angers against innocent foreigners which especially nigerians and now now killing our miming our people and destroying our neighborhood our livelihoods and labor is it so uh, I want the world to, to send a strong message to South Africa. This barbaric act cannot continue in this 21st century. The federal government should take a, a strong stand to protect its citizens all over the world. Please can you tell the world your name and your profession, what you do as a business in South Africa? Well, my name is Jude Anthony, and, and uh, I'm a musician. At the same time, I'm a, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a preacher. And then um, I do voice, you know, when I was in South Africa, I was doing voices, you know, voiceovers and all that, you know. So I've been on the radio before in South America and all that. You know, I'm well traveled in Nigeria, you understand what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm happy for the opportunity the, the chairman has given us now to come back because we have lost, we have lost everything that we work for. I have been to, I have cases that I've taken South Africans to court and I lost. Because the, the laws of South Africa, they, they, they hate foreigners so much. I have never, since I've been traveling all my life, I've never seen a people or a country so hateful of its fellow humanity. You understand what I'm saying? I've been to court. People, the South Africans stole my money, I went to court. Before I went to court, the foreigners told me, hey, you, you're just going to go waste some more time in the court. They're not, you're not gonna win. I said, no, I'm gonna try. And I went, I tried. That was in Cape Town. And I lost the case. Even with the evidence that I had, the, the, the judge told me I should go bring more evidence. They want to see more evidence. And prior to going to court, the, the man was begging me, the South African man was begging me that I, knew I should drop the case. He wanted to pay me back. But the people, you know, they started speaking the language before, in my very presence, not knowing what they were talking about. And so they, discrimin they discriminated against me, and I lost that case. And I have had many things, I have lost so, so much in South Africa, that I can, if I go to the court, if I, it's meaningless for me to go to the court. You understand what I'm saying? And at the same time, I have, um, and, and, and a lot of them are owing me money now. I could not get my money back. Because you go, you go to the South African police, they, just, they look at you, a foreign Nigerian. They hate Nigerians so much, I'm telling you. You can get you. You will not have your way in South Africa because of that. You know they have a law that is a policy that is discriminative against Nigerians. I don't know what we have done to them. After all, we know that without Nigeria, South Africa would not have obtained a, a, a independence. You know they own us gratitude, but instead of the gratitude that they own us, they are now miming, killing our people. Like I said before, a, a, a life of a Nigerian is worth more than 10 South African lives because they are lazy. They are lazy. They don't want to work. They want government to provide everything for them, and the government is doing. And the one good thing that I learned from South Africa that I, I hope Nigerians will copy and learn is that South Africans, eh, they, the people, they know how to demand for their rights. When the South African is pushed to the world, the people rise up and they fight for their rights and the government listens to them. But in Nigeria, is the, is the, the government, the people are, they, they just, you know, the people are just laid back, you know, it's just like, you know, that is not my business, you know. It should be your business. We should be concerned about what the, what the governments are doing. Because we vote this government to provide and to protect for us, to put jobs. You know, to secure our right. Look at Nigeria, there is no security. Wow. I guess I think it's time for us to hold Nigeria, the Nigerian officials and the, their, their lead, and our leaders to accountability like South Africans are doing. Did you see, did you know that when this xenophobia was, when the South Africans were busy killing Nigerians, there was no, uh, 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 what's it called? The government, the president did not come out to speak and condemn it. 
It was after three or four days later that he came out to speak to say, police, now you should go, you should arrest those people. But if you were in Nigeria, the first day, the, the Nigerian government will call police and they will call uh, and, 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 uh, the military to kill our people. I think it's, it's time now that Nigeria government should stop killing our people. They should use rubber bullets to despise any uh, 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 demonstrations and not shoot outright because South African people, the government value the lives of every South African. That is my take for today. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. I'm so sorry, man. I'm so bitter now because all of us, we are angry. You know, we are angry. I'm not slept for the past three days now. You know, because we are hiding because we don't know who is going to sneak on us that, oh, Nigerians are living here. They call Nigerians out and kill them, a lot of them. I wish you a happy stay in Nigeria. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, thank you very Thank much. you for having me. Okay. Thank you. Have peace. Okay.